So to get started, we'll need a blank folder and we'll run npm init y in order to initialize our npm project. We'll also install our dependencies. We need express, .env, multa, multa s3 and aws sdk client s3. I'm going to also add type module to my package.json so that I can use the module syntax. And we also need an index.js file. So in that file, import our two dependencies, this file, .env config and express. We need to initialize the express app and also define a port that we want our express app to run on. I'm also going to use the express static middleware. And this is going to allow us to serve our assets from the public folder. And we'll also define some error handling middleware, which is going to return a status and a JSON message with error in it. And lastly, we'll define app.listen and specify the port and also a callback, which in our case is just going to be a log to the console. So the next thing we'll do is define a new file called HTTP exception. And this is just going to be a class that extends the base error class. And all it needs is a constructor that takes two arguments, status and message, and we'll call super with message. And then we'll set this.status to the status that we passed in. Now create an upload.js file, import multa, and also import our HTTP exception file that we just defined. The first thing we're going to create is a file filter. So this will determine whether the user is allowed to upload a file. And in our case, we just want to do a check to see if the MIME type is either JPEG or PNG. And if it is, use the callback function and pass in null as the first parameter and true as the second parameter. Otherwise, we'll pass in the exception that we've just defined as the first parameter with the error code 400 and message invalid file type and the second parameter will be false. After this, we can define our storage options. So we're gonna be using multi.disk storage and the first property of the function is gonna be destination. So the second parameter of the callback which is going to be a string, will specify where we want to store our file. So in our case, we're going to store it in the public folder. And the second property will be file name. So we'll create a unique prefix. And in the callback, we will set the second parameter to be prefix dash and then file dot original name. And the reason why we're doing this is to keep the file extension. So original name should contain the file extension that the user uploaded. And finally, we will export default multi with the two options that we defined passed in, storage and file filter. So we'll go back to index .js and we'll import our upload file. So we'll define our first route, which is going to be a post request to slash image. And we're going to use upload.single and then we're going to pass in image. So this specifies the field name that we're looking for. So that'll be what the image gets passed through as. And upload.single basically just means that we're expecting one image. Our second route will be a post request to slash images and this accepts an array of images. So we use upload.array images, which is going to be the field name. And then we also specify five, which is the amount of images where the user is allowed to pass through. And our last request is going to be a post request to slash product. And we're going to be using upload.fields, which basically allows us to define multiple fields that the user is going to be allowed to upload. So in our case, we're going to allow them to upload a field called main and max count is set to one. So they're able to upload one field called main. And then the second field is called gallery and the max count of that is set to five. So they're allowed to upload five fields with the name gallery. And lastly, we'll create the public folder, which is where we're going to store the files and we will start our node server. Now that we're ready to test our local file upload, head over to your HTTP client of choice. In my case, I'm using Insomnia and create a request to upload a single image. It'll be a post request that goes to localhost 8000 forward slash image and make sure that you set the body type to multipart form data. Now add a field called image and select a file and then click send. All being well, we should receive a successful response. So now we're going to test the endpoint that uploads multiple images. So create a new request that is a post request to slash images and we'll add two fields called images and select an image for each one. And then click send and we should all being well, get a successful response from the server. Now create a third request that goes to slash product, add one field called main, and then you can add up to five fields called gallery and select an image for each one of those and click send. And we should hopefully get a successful response from the server. Now we can get started on adding S3 integration. So the first thing you'll want to do is add a .end file. 
add AWS access key and AWS secret access key and make sure you fill out those details with a client that can access your S3 bucket. Then we're going to go back to our upload.js file and import S3 client and also Malta S3. Now we'll define our S3 client and pass in our credentials. And also we want to specify a region, which is going to be the region of your S3 bucket. We can remove the Malta disk storage function and replace it with Malta S3. And the first thing we'll pass in is our S3 client, then our bucket name. If your bucket uses ACLs, then we can pass in an ACL. We're also going to pass in content type and set that to Malta S3 dot auto content type. And then we're going to pass in a key, which is basically going to be the same as the file name we defined for local storage. And that's all the changes you need to make. So we can stop our node server and restart it to let the new code take effect. Testing our S3 integration is really easy. We can just reuse all of the HTTP requests we defined in our HTTP client earlier. Just click send on each one. And we can see that in the response, we're getting some extra information like key and location, which tells us that our files are being stored in S3. So hopefully that helped. If it did, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.